This meeting is being recorded. <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Welcome everybody. to Trinity Sunday. Trinity Sunday. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, forever. We have a little bit of an we echo. Does somebody have echo. their somebody have their um, two um, computers on? Two computers on. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Hi. This is our one. This is our one. If, well, if everyone mutes, well, I, everyone I think we won't have an echo. Have an echo. And everyone should mute. Everyone should mute. Okay, how are we doing now? That's good. Okay, welcome to Trinity Sunday. Welcome to any guests who will be joining us online later and welcome to anybody who woke up this beautiful morning to join us on this Trinity Sunday. We're so blessed to have Deacon Ann Reed with us again. Um, happy retirement and thank you for joining us and preaching for us this morning. And we have a couple of announcements this morning. The first announcement that we have is that in-person worship will begin next Sunday, June 6th, 2021. There will be a Zoom link for the service. And so anybody who wants to participate as they're participating now can do that still. We'll have the camera set up so that you can hear everything that's happening in the service. Um, and of course, there might be some bugs as we try to do this at the beginning, but we'll try to work them out as we go. And, and I just hope everybody will be patient as we as we um, try to do our best with the technology as we move back into service and hopefully allow everybody to stay with us, whether they want to come into the church or stay online. The second announcement I have is, is an con uh, announcement of congratulations. Uh, Crystal Kendrick was awarded one of the fifth for third foundation grants for her company, The Voice of Your Customer. And so we are um, just elated and, uh, uh, for her achievement and uh, just a, a spectacular achievement. And I know that she's very pleased um, with this also. And we're so glad to have her as part of our community and part of the, and seeing her witness in the Cincinnati community. The last, yeah. the last announcement I have is that there's a Proctor summer camp this year for um, people over 50. And um, you can sign up for that by going to proctorcenter.org slash camp. And that is in our, uh, our bulletin that Mrs. Harris sent out. So if you need a digital copy, or if you need a place where you can just click on that, go to the um, bulletin that Mrs. Harris sent out with our email. And you should be able to click on that if you would like to um, explore the theme of spirituality and aging at the Thompson Lodge at Proctor. And now let us prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship the Lord our God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. 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 Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Do we have our reader for today online? If not, I'm happy to do it. I'm okay. Can you hear me? Uh-huh. <clears throat> After seeing a version, a vision of God's glory, Isaiah despairs that he is unworthy. But when an angel takes away his sins, he has to be sent forth as God's servant. A reading from the book of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphims were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voice of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the king and the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphims flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraphim touched my mouth with it and said, Now this has touched your lips. Your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who would go with us? And I said, here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Thanks God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> A reading from Psalm 29. We will read the refrain and join with me in reading Psalm 29. In the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord, glory. To the Lord, glory. Right. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord, the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The Lord of glory thunders. The, the, the Lord, the Lord, Lord mighty, is upon the water. mighty water. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. Yeah. The voice, voice of the voice of the voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The, the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord of breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf. And Mount Hermon, Mount Hermon like, like a young Mount. wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The voice of the Lord the shakes Lord the wilderness. The wilderness. Shakes the wilderness. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees ripe. And, and strips the forest bears. The forest bears. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying. Glory. 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 The Lord sits enthroned upon the flood. The Lord, the Lord sits enthroned, sits enthroned, 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 enthroned forevermore. 
The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord, the Lord shall give his, his, his people, give his people blessing. blessing of peace. In the temple of the Lord, the of the Lord. Of Zion, glory. <clears throat> In our second reading, disciples have been redeemed from our slavery to sin and children adopted by God. We, we are now heirs with Christ of the Lord's own glory. A reading from the epistle to the Romans. So then brothers and sisters, we are debtors not into the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, God. be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to praise you, to you, Lord. Christ. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. <clears throat> Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to, Praise to, Christ. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Amen. So welcome to Trinity Sunday, everyone. Um, it's one of those Sundays that um, I get to preach a lot because it's a doctrinal feast and 
not a biblical feast. And so nobody understands the Trinity. And so everybody likes to not have to preach that Sunday. But I remember Father Chris's sermon from last year because I eat a banana every day. And I remember you describing the Trinity as being three in one like a banana. So, well, y'all can stop there if you want to, but I'm going to move on for today. <laughs> and um, just say, um, today, I think, is the day in which the three great feasts of the church, Christmas, uh, Easter, the Triduum, and Pentecost, are sort of summed up and um, articulate our understanding of who God is. Three dimensions, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We think about the three great feasts of the church, Christmas, which is when God became incarnate, God became human, God allowed himself to come to earth to be born as the child Jesus, another person in the Trinity. We think of the Good Friday through Easter time and recognize God's work showing new, that new life is possible, that death doesn't have the last word for us. And on Pentecost, which we celebrated last week, we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit, empowering the disciples and those who are gathered to be aware of God in new ways. I mean, they all spoke new languages and they heard and understood each other for the first time. And the spirit empowered them to go forward from there and to serve as Jesus emissaries, to be charged to be Jesus hands and feet in the world. Every single one of these feasts shines the light of God's love into a broken world. Our gospel reading today is the story of Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee, an important person in the life of the Jewish community, one of a very limited number, one who had taken a vow to follow the law. He was a rule follower. He came to Jesus by night. And it's, there's been lots of speculation as to why that is, but in the Gospel of John, the images of dark and light play a lot in the Gospel of John between goodness and the sin of humanity. But he came at night, and I speculate he came at night because as a Pharisee, he was either trying to find something out about Jesus, and it was also not uncommon for um, the, the Talmud says, you know, you should learn, you should study at night because you can learn more, you can absorb better. So maybe Nicodemus went to Jesus at night because it was the best time for him to hear. Yet he came curious whether his curiosity was rooted in trying to trip Jesus up or whether his curiosity was really trying to understand. He came to find out more about who Jesus was and about Jesus's teaching. The story as it unfolds reveals that Nicodemus is puzzled and he doesn't understand Jesus, what Jesus is telling him. And the question I ask myself is whether perhaps his mind was just closed because he was such a rule follower or was he willfully misunderstanding Jesus? Was he just saying, I don't know. But Jesus tells him that to see the kingdom of God you have to be reborn. You have to be changed. You have to see things in a new way. Says you have to be born from above. The Greek word anothen from the beginning means, is, is, means several different things. It can mean from the beginning. It can mean something completely radical. It can mean to be born again or a second time. And it can also mean to be born from above or from God. So this word that is translated anew can have lots of different meanings, which may be part of why Nicodemus was so puzzled. But Jesus says that to see God's reign, Jesus tells Nicodemus 
that he has to see things in a new and open way. He has to open his mind and he has to start afresh. That's what you have to be born from above is all about. So on this Trinity Sunday, we acknowledge the fullness of who God is. We say that this is God is Father, God is Son, God is Holy Spirit. And maybe it's a good day to ask the question of ourselves, what is this God that we proclaim asking of us? Because if we're like, like, like Nicodemus, if we're set in our ways, careening along in life almost by rote, it's likely that we are being invited this day to open our minds, to be reborn, to recognize that God makes all things new and that old habits and old practices can be cast aside or, or recast in a way that connects us to God in new ways. Whether or not we wanna go down this path is up to us. But what we need to understand is that this is not an easy task because you and I have developed patterns and practices over a lifetime. We are pressed for time. We need routine to help us get done all the things that we want to accomplish. And we're content with our lives. We're content with our homes and our families and opening ourselves up in a new way or opening ourselves up to something new. Why would we want to do that? It's so disruptive. It's so um, disconcerting and, and sets us off our game because, you know, we've got game. We know what's going on. And why would we want to change that? We do what we do because our routines and the patterns that we follow, our contentment implies that we don't need God. We're going to get along. We're satisfied. We don't need interruptions because as followers of Jesus, if you look at the gospels, the followers of Jesus were constantly interrupted. We don't wanna to have to encounter that. We don't wanna to have to worry about the homeless people, the hungry people, the people on the margins, the prisoners, the lonely. We don't wanna to have to worry about all those things because our life is content and we are good. Yet Jesus tells us that we, when we are present to the least of the people in society, we are present to him. Just as Isaiah was commissioned by God, you and I are sent forth to tell a story of how God has worked in our lives. Have we allowed God to work in our lives. If we don't open ourselves up to change, what story do we have to tell? Do we tell a story that says we can do it all ourselves, that we can manage our sorrows and our challenges on our own? Do we tell a story about how our friends are always going to be there for us? I don't know about you, but for me, those stories aren't always true. That sometimes my friends and family aren't there for me. That sometimes I can't do it on my own. And sometimes the only place I can be healed from my sorrows and my challenges is by taking it to Jesus and offering up my life to God's work, to prayer, to hear the voice of, of love, of unconditional love that was shown to us through the three great feasts of the church. The gift of the Holy Spirit shows forth in the lives of each one of us when we open ourselves up to that something new, to Jesus who offers us a new way of being, when we open ourselves up to that, others see that loving care and that loving kindness 
in our voices, in our lives, that our lives become centered on showing God's love to others, showing kindness to a stranger. Our love, our lives become full of the ability to show love to the unlovable. And we're able to let go of our selves being the center of our universe. And we can embrace other people or even defer to other people. When we allow something new to enter our lives, when we embrace the new questions, we see different opportunities stretch out before us. When we do that, we're inviting the Holy Spirit to work in our lives and to encourage us to be the best that we can be. When we allow ourselves to be on terms of intimacy with God, when we don't shut God out and think that we've got it all figured out, when we allow ourselves to know that we are God's children, because God knows us inside and out, we want to embrace God when we pause the patterns of our lives and pray for the courage to see things new. We set our minds on things of the spirit and we let go of worldly passions. We welcome ourselves and we welcome others as adopted children of God, as part of God's family because all of us are adopted and loved by God. And then we get to carry that love into the world. I wanna close with a prayer today that is often offered, that is offered at ordinations and it should be offered at baptisms. Let us pray. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up and things which had grown old are being made new and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Let us confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. We believe in one God. The Father, the Father of the Almighty, Almighty maker, of maker, of maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified at the Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophet. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to men. Anne, would you like to lead us in our prayers of the people? Sure. Let us pray for the church and for the world. I bind unto myself today the strong, the strong name of the Trinity by invocation of the same three and one, three and one, and one and three. I bind unto myself today. A deep and nurturing care for the earth and your own creation, given as a gift and mother to all of your creatures. I bind unto myself today the needs of the world, community, for the church universal, and my neighbors around the world, over any pain, any sorrow, or trouble. I bind unto myself today the, the needs of our nation and pray and for, for its, its good governance that together, that together we may live, live up to the highest ideals. Ideal. I bind unto myself today our, our state, state, our city, city and our neighborhood. Of I bind unto myself today the care, the care of, care of anyone, anyone who is sick or in prison, prison. Anyone, anyone who is in need or suffering, need or suffering especially, especially Maida, Michael, Yvonne, the Keith Debbie, family, I'm clear for all those who mourn, Kim, for Francis, for Jean, and for Brian, for Ed, our longtime member. Tom Clear, who is adjusting to life differently with illness, and now is adjusting to life at Maple Knoll. Keep Terry Clear at the family in our extra prayers. Amen. Amen. I bind unto myself today. The blessed memory of the faithful departed, especially Especially Gloria, Charlie, Gloria, Ariana, Howard, Gloria C. Silbert, Dan, Alice, John Laney, Jim, Mary Charnage. May their memories be for a blessing. And we pray for our, our church community, for those who have been mentioned. We also pray for Christopher Garrison, Andrew Surratt, Tate and Ann Greenwald, for Jeannie Hayes, George and Rosetta Hall, for Susan Gordon, Gail Davis, Gail Jackson, Vicki Washington, Marty Wilson, Alan Harris, Betty Tate Beaver, for Donna Rogers, Charlotte and Robert Wilson, for Myra Page's nephew Mike Jr. and his wife Audrey and for their children, for Natalie Hayes, for Lynn Polly and Helen Bender, mother of Renee Williams. And we pray for the family of Harry Turnage, for all those who are dealing with the COVID-19 vaccination or pandemic, for the healthcare professionals and frontline workers that have supported us throughout this pandemic. We pray for those in nursing homes, especially Corinne Blanton, Eleanor Bonner, Dorothy Kiner, and Jeannie Hayes. And we give thanks for June birthdays this week for Jackie Conliffe and Andrea Lynn Johnson. And of course, we hold deep in our hearts all those who put themselves in harm's way for people in the military, law enforcement agencies, fire departments, and EMT specialists, especially for Tyrone Hall Jr., Darren Hall, Ernest R.J. Harris, James A.S. Harris and Brian Hurd.
And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with, you. with you. And also with you. Peace, everyone. Peace, everybody. Peace, everyone. Peace, Peace to all. Lord. Peace, everyone. Peace. Just one more week. Peace. <laughs> Peace, everyone. We will see. We will see each other incarnate next Sunday. All We're right. Comfortable. <laughs> comfortable to come in. Man. I'm I'm in Washington D.C. right now visiting visiting some cousins, and we went up to the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial, and um, I told asked my six year old as we were walking up to. I said. Uh, Constantine, do you know who that is? He said, I'm pretty sure he was one of our presidents. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife said, no, he wasn't a president, but he was a prophet. And, <laughs> and he said, prophet, that means he told people the truth. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the mouths of babes. <laughs> so... so. <laughs> All right. Uh, during our during our offertory, we like to remind everybody to please remember and honor your pledge to St. Andrews, or if you have not made a pledge to St. Andrews, to either to make a pledge or to to make sure and, and donate as much as you feel comfortable donating to the mission and ministry of our parish, and um, especially as we go back into the sanctuary, um, we really would we really need your support. And so you can do that either online, and there's a link that uh, Leroy sent out in our email this morning, or you can just text message 513-854-1520, and all you have to do is type in the message give, and it will um, run you through a whole thing, and it'll send you a receipt. And now the other part of our offertory is our musical offertory, our offering from our fully vaccinated choir. <music>
man. Now let us pray in the words that our Lord Jesus taught us when he said, Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, 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 hallowed, hallowed be thy name, be thy, name, thy, name thy, kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, done as it is in earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and glory, forever forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And our concluding prayer is a prayer for today by Phillips Brooks. Would you say it with me? O oh God, oh God, oh God, give me strength to live another day. day. Let me not Let turn the current before it's difficult to recreate to its duties. Let me not lose faith to other people. people. Keep me keep sweet, me sweet down, and sad of heart, great of ingress, and I have to trudge for your meanness, preserve me from minding little stings or giving them. them. Help me to keep my heart, heart clean and, clean and to live so honestly and fearlessly that no outward failure can just pardon me. Or take away the joy of conscious integrity. Open wide the eyes of my soul that I may see in all of the things. Let me this day be a vision of thy truth, inspire me of joy, and make me the comfort of your suffering soul in the name of the strong deliverer, our only Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and the Holy Trinity. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be Thanks to God. God. Thanks Hallelujah. be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. Everybody have a great holiday now. Oh.